that. Yeah, and I think it's the way that we present that. We can't do it in a hand wringing, you know, the sky is falling um, approach because you've got a budget that's that's going to support a high performing school system here. Um, and to think that you're, I mean, schools have insatiable needs. You're never going to be able to fund all of our needs. Um, but be glad to point out some things that are underfunded. I mean, if you turn to athletics here, I mean, if you just look at what the fundraising goes on in this community, that will lead you to the answer to your question. There's tremendous, tremendous amount of fundraising going on here. And some of it goes to that needs to want, not to want, you know, what I talked to you about before. Right. I really I just, think I, that's where you could spend some valuable time with, um, with the new superintendent, really getting a handle on what you think as a school board you should be providing and what you should be relying on CEF booster groups and others. I was actually thinking more micro. If we have a program, it must have already meant the need column. To have it underfunded bothers me as to whether or not you have a new program, then it is a need versus, I can never remember your second prompt. Want. Want. <laughs> um, that's a completely different discussion. But if we have an existing program that's underfunded, like I said, bothers me. And I, I guess I would, I would just say that um, the school budget, even for the last few years, as, as things have, um, as, and we've had difficult budget years, really we've been doing okay. And perhaps um, you, you're almost asking me to highlight some just minor tweaks that I make from year to year in to increase transportation here or to increase this there. For example, over the last few years, despite terrible budgets, I have increased this, the science team has become incredibly popular, and I have been able to, um, to, to direct some, a little bit more money that way. And so that's, those are kind of the minor tweaks that happen kind of behind the scenes to try to take those things into account. And I think um, the budgets that the board has approved has allowed us to continue to do that, um, I guess slowly and quietly, but to great benefit for the students. Any other questions for Jeff? No? OK. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to the middle school. And I'll mention the same thing um, that I did regarding Jeff's budget. The middle school is 172000 if you uh, take out the salaries, um, you know, you put the salaries back in and it, you know, it's $3.7 million to operate the middle school. So you can see, that, you know, in comparison, $172,000 where the money is at all of our schools is in people. But Steve is here to answer any specific questions you have about the $172,000. There is another revenue source here too. If we started a bike fee, charge half the price that they, you know, two wheels will charge half the price of the four wheels at the high school. So, <laughs> make a little bit more. I'm going to vote against that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Trikes from Honko, right? I'll have to prorate those. Questions? Questions? Hey. Uh, Mary, you asked about considerations, oh. or John did. Somebody asked earlier to Jeff about considerations, programs, and stuff like that. We're, we're holding fast with the programs we have as well. We've got one consideration on, on what RTI should actually look like for our 7th and 8th grade next year, but we're still working through some ideas, but there's no additional programs and things like that. I guess I would follow Mary's question, which is... Um, I'm learning is a good one. Any uh, changes in the programming that would are important to um, talk about? That are important. What? The, that are important for the school board to know, um, especially around. Yeah, just that. Just that response to intervention in the seventh and eighth grade. What's what's going to be most effective? And as you work with kids and you adjust your programs and you try to figure out which are the parts that are 
that are going to do it and which, which don't seem to be making a difference. So we've got our response to intervention and then we have executive functioning services. And so we're trying to, we're just kicking around some ideas now and doing a little bit of research and, and we hope to uh, bring in some information from our uh, a conference that some people are going to in Boston and then in the uh, Chicago conference on pyramid response to intervention. And I would assume there's no line item for RTI right now or for an increasing that because it's not uh, a mandated program at this point? We're not increasing it because we think we've got the personnel to provide Take kids with the support services that they need. Okay. We may rearrange how we provide those services, but it's not going to be a significant difference okay. in delivery. I'm sorry to ask that question twice. I thought you were talking about um, what programs to keep, what mm -hmm. you know, classes, to keep, extracurriculars to keep in. So, oh, okay. um, thank you. I have a question, and this is, I, I'm sure, my oversight. Um, Chiwanki, I didn't see an item, a line item in here. Um, is that 100% funded by parents yes. now? Yeah, it's about 43000 I think it's forty-one, forty-three thousand dollars So that covers staff stipends and... It covers transportation staff stipends, uh, educational technician overtime. Okay. It covers uh, uh, any... Uh, additional needs we may have due to medical concerns or something like that. Okay. I'm sorry I missed that. I, you may have mentioned that in the past. Um, just, um, at the last, when we were in the, the round table discussion, somebody asked me something about what happens with that. But, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. I just mentioned that it was parent, parent support. There is... 100%. Wow. There isn't any funding for it in the school budget. David? Um, I, I had trouble hearing what um, Kate was asking, and she may have asked this, is there any reduction in programs or elimination of programs? No. Um, the other question I have is, I just want to make sure we're still in status quo. Last year we had a, uh, a lively debate about um, team teaching in fifth and sixth and more of a junior high model for seventh and eighth. Is that still and we put that off to this year or maybe a future year about how we're going to, is that still, um, we still have roughly um, a junior high model for seventh and eighth grade and a middle school model for fifth and sixth grade? Yeah, fifth and sixth grade, team structures, seventh and eighth grade, kids rotate through teachers. Uh, seventh grade this year, they have, if you have, whoever you have for language arts, it's also your social studies teacher. Next year, the eighth grade will look the same way. So, but it's not a team structure. It's not like you and I are on the same team and we have this pool of okay. kids. Okay. You said that people who, so somebody has a dual, uh, they teach social studies and language arts? In the seventh and eighth grade, all of the teachers who teach language arts also teach social studies. Has that always been that way? Um, in the seventh and eighth grade, almost all the time. But there are some teachers who were, for instance, Deb Casey, a couple of, in, not this year, but in previous years, has been math and social studies. But this year, they're all aligned for language arts and social studies. But well, I guess, I mean, that's not something that's happened in the last couple of years. It's been... This year is the first year that that's been true of every case. Um, most, it's mostly been true of other years. But for math and science, you get a math teacher teaching math and a science teacher teaching science. Yep. And the only... And those people teach two subjects, so there isn't anybody... I uh, don't think there's anybody who's teaching just science. So if you're, if you're in this particular math class and that person teaches that math class, you may have that person for science, but it's due to scheduling and trying to fit your classes in. So you have... It's not People with teaching, I, I can only use a term I'm more familiar with, dual majors, and they're teaching math and science. You only have one person in the seventh and eighth grade who's not, who doesn't teach, uh, who is not teaching this year or next year, so far in our preliminary schedules, to teach more than one subject. And that's because um, we have more uh, levels of math, so I need more, I need uh, Deb Casey, who's in the seventh grade, to also pick up an eighth grade math this year, and she'll probably do the same thing next year. I, I'm, I guess I'm tired, I'm getting slow, or I'm, I'm getting slow and I'm tired. 
David, there's no changes to how the middle school's been operating. I don't know if that I helped. thought he just told me that there was. That's what I was no. trying to figure out. No, I, don't, I didn't hear him say that. I think historically uh, the way the middle school is going to operate next year is the same as always has been. Does that help? No. I think the only change that, I mean, I have noticed, it, and you said this, was that social studies teachers um, teach English, correct? Yes. And English teachers te teach social studies. That's that far. Okay. And I heard math teaching science and science teaching math. Well, everybody's, so. almost everybody in the school has always taught. Same, same as every other year. Almost everyone in the school has taught uh, two subjects. And we're continuing that. And so there's not, there's not a change in any kind of plan on the fact that almost everyone is almost entirely dual certified and, and always has been since I've been at the school. I'm mindful that we're at a budget workshop, so some of the issues maybe that are outside the scope might be a better venue to discuss maybe some of the, these questions. And I'm mindful that you've been here a long time. I just had a couple budget questions I thought we could get to. Just one, I saw on software, uh, the budget, the software budget for the middle school is yes. a bigger number than it is for the technology district-wide. and. I'm sure we need to research it, and if there's not an easy answer, I, I, that's just something that sh was curious. Yes. On um, we have, uh, because we're at, at the middle school, we have the laptops, the one-to-one, -one. Oh. so we have a number of site licenses that are paid for out of this account. We have explorelearning.com, discovery education, health, discovery education, science, uh, we have uh, Plato site licenses we share with Dom, Lexia site licenses, um, a brain pop. So all of those pieces, IXL math, they're all paid out of this account. If the laptops were at the high school, you'd see that same number applied to the high school. Thank you very much. Did you have another one, Michael? No. Anyone else? Did we get a vote on that bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least is Hong Cove and the amount of money outside of salary is $130,000. Uh, with salary, it's $3.3 million. Pong Cove, you might remember, um, because of enrollment decreases, we we're able to eliminate one teaching position, and we also have a half-time reading teacher that was funded with um, federal stimulus money that uh, we will not be funding next year. Okay. So Pong Cove, because of enrollment swings, are down one and a half teachers. Ken, did you anticipate questions on those staffing? No, I just uh, sort of issues tonight, or you just wanted to give that over. Yeah, mm -hmm. setting the plate. Okay. Because I bet I I, I I trust we'll have questions along those lines, but I thought that that was yep. not tonight's. Okay. Good, good point. Yeah. Other questions? Tom, I know you tried to explain this at the last meeting, and I'm just learning, but maybe just comment on the uh, staff development, uh, reading recovery. From zero to six thousand, just for informational purposes. Right, that, that's an, an official national program. So, in order for us to sustain membership in that for professional development and be part of the data collection service that they provide, it's two thousand dollars for each reading recovery teacher. That also supports the reading recovery network in Maine and other states too. Thank you. Okay. Is it an every year, or every uh, two years membership fee? It's annual. And so why we didn't pay for it last year? We did, but in, in the, the budget trials and tribulations, it, it dropped out as a line item, so we had to take it from other professional development. Remember all the negotiations right. we went okay. through? And then when it came, uh, it finally showed up in print. It was missing, so we had to use other um, had to use professional development funds to do it. 
So are we...